Well, it's lovely to greet you all this morning. Um, if you are joining us in person, have a look round. There are some unusual faces. <laughs> if you are at home, take a look round there because there may be some unusual faces there as well. But um, the faces you see today here that are here leading our worship are those representing some of the younger people um, around this division, this area where the Salvation Army has churches going from Basingstoke up to, oh, up to the north somewhere, I'm not sure. Rugby. Yeah, rugby even, yes. We haven't got anyone here from rugby, have we? No, I didn't think so. Well, you can tell by the shape of the football they carry with them, can't you? That's... Uh, but they, these folks are going to be leading our worship today. If you, if you are here and you're a regular worship, you know that. If you are at home and you're wondering what's going on, these folks have been invited to lead our worship. You've already heard what they sound like. And they sound pretty good, don't they? Yeah? And I guess it's a little bit like going out for a meal. You have the appetizer, don't you? To get you interested to get your juices going, and then you're ready to enjoy the real part of the meal, the main course. Well, we're going to have the main course shortly, and this, this afternoon, if, you like, if you'd like to enjoy a dessert, then join us in the town centre at 2.30, just outside Christchurch, and these youngsters will be presenting a something out there. I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be, because you can actually see for yourself. If you're at home and you live in Woking, come and join us this afternoon at 2.30, if you live further afield, well, just think about us, because it may be raining, but hopefully not. Worship is a little bit like a diamond. And no matter how you look at it, there's always some other sides to it. And today we're going to see a different side of the worship that we can give to our God. And it's going to be presented in the style of these younger people, not the boring sort that normally leads you. Okay? It's going to be the youngsters that are going to lead us today. And worship may well be different. But just remember, it's like a different side of the diamond. You're just seeing it slightly differently. But they're still going to lead us in worship to our almighty God. And so can I invite you all at home? Clap your hands at home as well if you like. But if you're here, give them a warm welcome as we hand over worship to them today. Thank you very much. Lord. It is so good to be with you. We've been um, planning and preparing and practicing and praying uh, for this visit for a little while now, and it's so lovely to, uh, to do something in person as well. To, it's been a couple of years since we've been able to do a visit as a youth chorus, so we are so excited that I know you've been waiting for us to come for a really long time, and we are so glad to be able to come and join you. Um, we, we feel really welcomed by you, and, and we're, glad to, we're glad to join you. I, um, I'm Vanessa Coleman. I'm the Divisional Youth Team Leader, and um, with a bunch of other excellent people um, coordinating and working with the, um, the young people in the division and, and seeing what God is doing and equipping and releasing uh, our young people into what God has for them. Um, I'm going to read to you from the Bible just now. This is Psalm 29. <clears throat> and it says this, ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The voice of the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. Have you ever seen a cedar of Lebanon? They're like really, really enormous trees. Um, I saw one blown down in a storm recently, and it just was absolutely massive. The Lord makes Lebanon leaf like a carp, Syrian like a young wild ox. There's these empires and, and nations that... Um, God can make leap and rejoice. We need that in our day, don't we? Come, Lord Jesus. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists oak trees and strips forest, forests bare. Not <laughs> strips forests bare. 
He is capable of doing that for himself. <laughs> All in his temple cry glory. All in his temple cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So this morning, there's an invitation for you to receive strength from the Lord, to receive peace from the Lord, and an invitation for each of us to return and to join with the, all the forces of heaven, seen and unseen, that great cloud of witnesses, and, and us in person here and online and around the world, declaring glory to the Lord and to the greatness of his name. So I want to invite you to stand, and we're going to sing together, Thine is the glory. It's not too soon, too far after Easter to sing that, is it? But the glory of our Lord Jesus, demonstrated in his death, in his resurrection, in his life lived out for us. Uh, let's pour out the glory back to him this morning. <coughs> Good morning. Um, it is an absolute pleasure to be here um, with you today in Woking. Um, and what uh, David started by saying, this idea of worship being a diamond, I think really um, is important for us to remember right now. Because we are going um, to start leading our uh, prayer time. And it may be a little bit different to how you normally might um, visualize a prayer time. So last night when I was planning this, I looked up um, and I searched how many times was praise mentioned in the Bible. And from my search, I received 365 hits. I don't know if that is the actual amount, that, um, but there may, may be more. But that said to me, as a Christian, we should offer our praise to God every day of every year. 365. One thing that I've learned about praise is, and thanksgiving is that the more we intentionally engage with it, the easier it gets. The more we profess our gratitude to God, the easier it becomes. And the more we notice things to be grateful for. The Bible provides us with many reasons why we should choose praise. God's righteousness, 
his enduring love, his wonderful deeds, his faithfulness, his strength. I could go on. From its origins in Greek, praise simply means to confess and outwardly express our thankfulness to God for his blessings. So, as the youth chorus sing part of our next song, I want, you to inv- I want to invite you to do just that. Outwardly express your thankfulness to God for the blessings you have in your life. Together, we are going to raise our praise to God. You can see that we've got some balloons tied up at the front. So I want to invite you to come forward and write your praise on a sticker and stick it on a balloon. If you feel like you can't come forward to do that, um, if you raise your hand, a few of the youth chorus will come to you with a sticker and a balloon because we do not want you to miss this opportunity to raise your praise to God. So, Youth Chorus, if you feel like you want to do this as well, then I'm sure Drew Georgina will not mind you taking that second to also raise your praise. Thank you. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for your amazing power 
and the work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and your blessings over us. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for the sacrifices that you made so that we may have freedom and life. Forgive us for when we do not thank you enough for who you are, all that you do and all that you have given us. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Teach us to be joyful always, to pray continually and to give thanks in all circumstances. We love you and recognise that we need you this day and every day. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and your joy. We give praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name. Amen.
morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Kezia. Um, I'm at Oxford with my husband, Joe, who's playing trombone. And of course, by sheer coincidence, my parents are also the officers there. <laughs> um, I wonder how many of you relate to this. Born to Savage and Army parents, dedicated as a baby, become a junior soldier at seven, perhaps have a few years of uncertainty as a teenager, and then becoming a senior soldier in your late teens, early 20s, or beyond. You've been to the Salvation Army your whole life, and you've never known anything different. Now, as a so-called officer's kid, or OK for short, <laughs> I've been to my fair share of meetings and testimony times. I've heard wonderful stories of people meeting God for the first time, emotions running high like a lightning bolt. For a long time, I thought that this was what a proper testimony should be, and therefore I didn't have one. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 15 says, Keep on being faithful to what you were taught and what you believed. After all, you know who taught you these things. Since childhood, you have known the holy scriptures that are able to make you wise enough to have faith in Jesus Christ and be saved. When I came across this verse, it really resonated with me. I realized that being raised to know God and having him walk alongside me my whole life was my testimony. Christ be in my waking as the sun is rising, in my day of working with me every hour. Christ be in my gladness for the joy of living, thankful for the goodness of the Father's hand. Christ be in my sorrow, in my day of darkness, knowing that I follow in the steps he trod. Jesus, this is my devotion, all my life to know you, every day to walk with you. His presence has been a blessing throughout my life. I've known and trusted that God is with me in my good times and also the harder times. Of course, sometimes it's difficult to see it like that, but as the song says, we live by faith and not by sight. I won't go on too long. <laughs> I've been to a fair number of testimony times and there's always one person who goes on for long enough that you're worried about your lunch getting burnt. <laughs> um, but I'll leave you with a quote from C.S. Lewis, which I think is a good way of describing my life and worldview. I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen not only because I see it, because by it, I see everything else. Thank you. Uh, we're really um, looking forward to hearing the band. I don't have one in my course, so this is a real treat for me. Um, <laughs> um, there is not a usual offering um, during this if you would like to give there will be a plate at the door when you leave um, and there will be a QR code up on the screen there is a QR code up on the screen amazing um, I don't have one of those at my core either <laughs> thank you you're amazing um, the more you give the sooner the band stops We've got a very long piece to play. <clears throat> well, we're going to play an arrangement by uh, <clears throat> Major Lem Ballantyne of a chorus by Colonel Doug Kiff, and it's simply entitled uh, Living in the Light of Your Smile. So as we play, I want you to A, smile, and secondly, give, and at the end, once we've played, if you feel that we've played so well that you want to band in your core, Put your hands together because we're doing the best that we possibly can with the help of those people from the Youth Chorus who are sight reading this music as if you'd never know. Thank you. 
Lynn, who's going to read the Bible to us just now. Ooh. Does that help you? Uh, I can hold my Bible. It's okay. It's fair. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Caitlin. Never done this before. Um, <laughs> slightly nervous, but it's okay. Uh, so the Bible reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 8 to 14. <clears throat> so he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Thank you.
Is it on? Yes, it is on. Um, I now have the opportunity to let you to stand up and sing again. And we're going to sing a song which has got some actions. And they've just sat back down. But I think the males from the youth chorus can come up and do the actions. Because they love an action. And make sure they smile. If they're not smiling, point them out. Um, but our song we're about to sing next is going to be Our God is a Great Big God. And I believe there's a YouTube video for this song. But if we can all stand up and sing along, and if you're willing to, let's all do the actions. All right, I'm glad you've had a bit of a wriggle. This is Esther, who is going <coughs> to excuse me, uh, share what God's been speaking to her about the passage that Caitlin just read uh, to us. And um, we can't wait to hear. Uh, Esther, what, what God's given to you for us today. Um, Father God, would you bless Esther? We thank you for the way that you speak through her Holy Spirit. And uh, we pray that you would just give her boldness today to declare the word of God and that we would hear straight from you. Uh, and almost that we don't even see Esther, but that we, that we see you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. Would you bless her? Amen. How do you hear God? How often does he speak to you? Sometimes God's voice gives a sense of peace and tranquility within everyday life. And whilst we might not always be able to hear him, he can always hear us. There are certain passages in the Bible that relate to our communication and verbal connections with God, including one from 1 Kings chapter 19, 
verses 9 to 13, which says, And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? In this extract, Elijah shows that he is passionate about God. But now that the prophets have been killed, Elijah is afraid that he will be killed too. God tells him that he will appear and instructs Elijah to stand on the mountain. And then a wind came, and then and when a wind came, then an earthquake, then a fire. Yet God wasn't in those. God whispered to Elijah to let him know his presence, showing us that even though Elijah was on the verge of giving up, God helped him. I just wanted to pick up on the phrase, a gentle whisper. It wasn't a loud statement like you may have expected, like in the story of Moses, or when Jesus made Paul blind, but a simple, quiet sound, powerful enough to persuade a prophet. What we might, what we might expect often differs to what we are given, but we must accept that it doesn't matter how we reach the end of the road. We'll probably go along, wrong along the way, but with the guidance of God, we can end up in the place that we want to be. Communication is vital, especially when we need help. We must express how we feel and pray to God to help with any struggles we may have. Whether it's a physical issue or a mental health problem, there are people who can help and sometimes all you need is a bit of encouragement, just like God encouraged Elijah. We can use Elijah as a role model as we see things that don't always go our way. Just to put this reading into context, before the events of the wind, the fire, and the earthquake, two leaders, called Ahab and Jezebel, were against God and instead worshipped Baal. But Baal was an idol and therefore was false. When they worshipped Baal, more and more of God's people also wanted to worship Baal. God told Elijah to go to Ahab and Jezebel and tell them that it wasn't going to rain for a while and so no crops would grow and the Israelites would think that this happened because Baal was angry and they would blame Ahab for allowing them to worship Baal. This made ba uh, Ahab want to kill Elijah. Under God's instructions, Elijah hid in the wilderness and for three years there was no rain. Ahab continued to stay mad at Elijah because no matter how much he prayed to Baal, the land remained dry. Due to this, Ahab started to kill as many of God's prophets as he could find. God kept Elijah safe, and as he told the Israelites about God, a few started to believe, but the majority still worshipped Baal. In the third year of the drought, God directed Elijah to speak to Ahab, and again, again, and this time, Elijah challenged Baal to a contest. Both Elijah and Ahab made an altar in Mount Carmel to see which god would make the altar light up first. As Baal was false, Ahab's altar didn't set on fire. However, as you can probably guess, God set Elijah's altar on fire. After that, Elijah prayed for rain and God, god sent it. Yet this only made Ahab even more angry and he still wanted to kill Elijah. Elijah ran away and didn't want to be a prophet anymore. Due to this, God sent an angel to cook Elijah some bread. He allowed Elijah to see him. Then he sent the wind, the earthquake, and the fire, but he wasn't in them. A gentle whisper came to God, came, and God was in that. Imagine someone whispering. A whisper is quite quiet, and from a distance, you might not be able to hear someone whispering to you. So what do you do? You get closer. You draw your attention to that person, and if you can imagine that that person is God, then you can get closer to God. Sometimes a whisper can be small, but it has a big impact, just like a present can be small, but it can mean the world to someone. It's like the phrase, big things come in small packages, and a whisper means that you get closer, not just physically, but emotionally too. 
To us, it may not seem believable, but we've heard before that God can do anything. If he can do anything, then he will listen to your calls of help and communicate with you to help solve any difficulties in your life. And he may not answer straight away, he simply talk to you, but he may send a fire, or he could whisper. After all, does it really matter? As long as God is here for us, then we can pursue what we want to and know that we must keep going to be a role model to not only others, but ourselves too. He is a true God and powerful enough to prove himself to us and therefore we must believe and trust any plans he has made for us. He is loyal. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you are there for us and that you care enough to help us. Please help us to understand that we can talk to you at any point. We can trust you and we know that you may not always answer us in the way that we expect. But it doesn't matter because you find a way to help us. We thank you that you respect us for who we are and that you can listen to us. You are our Lord, good almighty. Amen. Um, as we sing just now, um, you, you guys can uh, start coming up, um, but I just want to invite uh, all of us really to respond to that uh, really powerful word from Esther. Thank you, Esther. Um, but there's the opportunity to, to hear God speaking in, in our own hearts. And sometimes, you know, the fire and the whatever isn't just happening out there. Sometimes it's just what's in our, our own hearts, isn't it? Um, so in the, the quietness as we, as we sing just now, there's opportunity <laughs> um, just to respond to the voice of God speaking, speaking now.
please stand as we sing our closing song. Um, first verses, speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy world.
for us for a wonderful time of worship this morning. Great Britain came second last night. Central South Youth Chorus came first today. Um, so we've had a really, really wonderful time of worship together. You young people, your lives hold so much potential. They really do masses and masses of potential. Hand it over to the Lord and he will use that potential absolutely in an amazing way. So much so that you would never even dream it possible. So thank you for a wonderful time of worship. You're free to, end, to join with us um, for coffee. And if my order's gone incorrectly, you can join us for pizza at one o'clock. We'd love to see some of you in town this afternoon at 2.30. But God bless you all and thank you for a wonderful time together. <laughs> 